So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Boys and girls. Boys and girls. Had to throw that in. Fine, you did. You threw it in. Welcome to Full Auto with Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon. This episode, I is this called the uh, the No No Gun Girl? The No No Girl. What the. The no 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 gun gun girl becomes becomes a go 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 gun gun girl. girl. I mean, how did you screw that up? You're a poet. Allegedly. And it's Rimmy Rimey. Rimey Rimey. Right. Or uh, the the alternative title is When Gun Reality Hits Home. Although I'd say, and that was my original title, but then after I already did the graphic for the show, Professor Rambo came up with a much better title, which is not, which is actually unusual because usually I'm the one that comes up with the clever titles, but he came through today, but he came through a little bit late. So we're, I, I, I say we, we, we dive right into the show because we've got a full slate of uh, stories to cover here. Are you ready? All right, is everybody ready to buckle uh, your seats because you have entered a full auto zone? Dude, you do that like a five-year-old. Congratulations. Hey, you know what? Five-year-olds are bosses, so I take that as a compliment. (laughs) So the first story we're going to do here is Concealed Carrier Stops Mass Shooter in Tennessee Church. Well, that's not exactly accurate, but go ahead. Well, no, he did. He's a concealed carrier, and he stops a mass shooter in a Tennessee church. It could have been a lot worse. How is that, that implies not accurate? that he used his gun to stop him. I wish he had, but he's a concealed carrier. Yeah, that's just like newspeak. You're, you're one of those news people. You you lie to everybody. I'm not you're, lying you're to anyone. Liar. No, as a matter of fact, I'm not lying to anyone because he did use his gun. Sort of. Well, no, no, sort of. He did. So okay, go ahead. Go ahead. The death of one and injuries of seven more people in a mass shooting in a Tennessee church. Could have been much worse if it were not for the heroic action of a concealed carrier. So, so the story is from Washington Post. Although you get versions of this story across the interwebs because it was a pretty, pretty big breaking story. So, uh, according to Washington Post, and I'm going to paraphrase here. It's uh, so so this dude came into the church. He was wearing a ski mask, and uh, well, actually, Washington Post said he stormed into the church, and he started shooting people. He shot seven people, including the pastor, before before some church usher, who happened to be a concealed carrier, rose up, and uh, uh, first he attempted to stop him. The guy pistol whipped him. He got hurt. Uh, then the, uh, the 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 usher went out to his car, got his gun because he was a concealed carrier, and he used his gun to detain him to keep him from going anywhere until the police arrived. Could have been a lot worse if it wasn't for that usher. So the shooting left a 39-year-old woman dead, and it occurred all this, this just this past Sunday. He killed, he killed that woman out in the parking lot before he even got in the church, if I read it right. Right. So, and, then he, and then he shot himself in the leg. When he was pistol whipping the guy. Yeah, the, yeah, that that's yeah. And now, uh, now, but I mean, the reason I we're covering this story is uh, really why, why, why did he go into the church as a concealed carrier with his gun and leave his gun behind? Well, that you know, there is the principle of if you're going to carry, always carry right always carry it's not and, even and get in the habit of adjusting your equipment to meet the particulars of your environment but also of what you're wearing and you know i've been there i've been to church where i have had to leave my gear in the car and other times when i've been heavy in church which is a little uncomfortable for me but nevertheless i'd rather be than not um but. uh not that i go to church a lot but uh when i do let's just say theoretically if i were of a mind i would be carrying uh i would i would dress in a way that i could carry i would probably pocket carry something small but i'd have something and yeah 
if you're going to carry, always carry. I mean, even if you're just around the house, you always carry just because you want to keep it. You want to keep the habit because if you don't always carry, then you end up leaving the house and you're not carrying when you really, really, really wanted to carry because you're going into a situation where you really, I mean, honestly, be honestly, what are the chances that, that you and I will ever, ever need to, to use a gun? Very low. Very, very incredibly low. And very I know low. that. I, I don't. The, your chances of getting hit by lightning are probably way greater. higher. Probably way greater. Way higher. Right. But some situations you go into that the chances may <laughs> dramatically increase. There's some places that uh, when you're going, you're going to want to have some some protection let's just say and that'll be just about the time that you went ahead and forgot to carry because you're not in the habit of carrying you know that's another thing like the gun control people on the outside they they look at folks that they're you know they that they always carry stuff and and you don't realize mr gun control person you don't realize that no, no nobody feels like i'm constant i don't feel like i'm constantly under threat and i constantly have to have a gun that's not why you always carry you always carry because you are always in the habit. And in this case, seven people were wounded. One person was killed. I don't think he would have been able to stop the person that was killed in the parking no. lot. But the seven people that were wounded, uh, there's a fairly decent chance that if this guy was carrying, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to judge from the fact that uh, this guy was able to deal with that dude who had a gun uh, and the name of the dude, by the way, is, uh, let's see. Do you really want to repeat it? Yeah, why not? Because his name should disappear from history. I think this one bears repeating, though. Why? Well, he... Does he give insight to the nature of the crime? Oh, I think it... I mean, well, not, not in and of itself, but in this case... It's, um... Well, I read an additional detail. Um, one of the people who was at the church was interviewed, and they said that this young man had visited with our church and had become a and had um, gone to service there a few years ago, um, semi regularly, if I understood correctly. So that doesn't make sense. Well, he's a Sudanese native uh, who has uh, his legal residency in the United States. Now, I don't yes. want to jump the gun and say what's what, but but at any rate, regardless of uh, whether he, you know what, I'm not going to mention his name. I think you're right about that. Uh, regardless, the the fact that the guy was able to subdue him probably i'm guessing probably in, indicates that this guy was not a trained professional was not highly skilled with the gun i'm just guessing I, I mean there could be mitigating circumstances where a trained person could get surprised but well the uh, absolutely but you also have the possibility that the usher uh may have been uh trained to deal with people who were trained well I don't know much about him. He's 22 years old. His name is Robert Caleb Engel. A and hero. He, and Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because if he wasn't there and he didn't confront the guy, I don't know if this guy doesn't reload and 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 more stuff happens. But my, my point here is that if this guy was able to basically subdue him without a gun, uh... I think it's highly likely that if he had a gun, that this would have ended real fast. Yeah. That this, there would be, there would have been, uh, not within the church, there most likely would have been no injuries. But your, your average concealed carry guy, though, isn't practicing, yeah, you know, yeah. like the special forces who are dropping, you know, what, what's the, you, you got to shoot like, uh, I'm, I don't know the, the number, but I'm making it up, like 3,000 rounds. Uh, a month yeah, documented. I, I, I'm not testifying to the ability of Caleb Engel, Robert Caleb Engel. I am testifying to the lack of ability, it appears, of the of the shooter. No, I, I understand that. But I'm just saying anyone in that church who, who may have been carrying, the first thing they're going to hear is the booms from that gun. They're going to look up and they're like, what is going on? Me personally, 
I don't think I'd move. I'd be like, what the hell's going on here? What is that guy shooting? Is this a joke? You know, it would be it would be seconds, many seconds before my, uh, I would actually because in that environment, I'm not expecting that. It's not like I'm at the the local convenience store down the street where there's, you know, dudes just hanging out and looking all sketchy and, you know, handing off packages to one another with slick uh, hand gestures where I'm like, dude, am I in a drug deal here? They, I, it's I, a different I, environment. I don't want to overplay and to be an alarmist uh, because, you know, statistically your chances of being involved in any, any of these types of shootings are, well, you probably – it gets struck by lightning 10 times in one day kind of statistics. But be that as it may, because there have been a few church shootings, yeah, when I, when I go to church, I am on guard. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, but I actually am. I'm so. actually trying to pray and worship God and stuff like that. Oh, oh wait, church. wait, no, no, say, it, I, say, know, that, say that Say that in a righteous, judgy way. Come on. No. Well, I'm just trying to pray now have a relationship with God, it's but I tough. understand. You know, I ain't scoping for bulges in people's jackets, you know. <laughs> wow, I'm not bold scoping, okay? I'm not bold scoping. I'm just awake, and I'm uh, alert, and I'm aware. Is, is I'm just saying that this 22-year-old kid, uh, when I say he's a hero, I don't just mean because he he jumped into action and you know and took this guy out. I, I think most people would freeze and and would be like, what is going on? And be and I don't want to use the word shock, but I because I don't think I would be in shock. I would be paralyzed by the reality is like, do I shoot this guy? Is he really is this a joke? Is this some kind of like stunt or or what? And by that time, I'd probably get shot before I would re be reacting. So it I sounds like realistic. what you're saying is it really doesn't matter if you could still carry your dead anyway. No, I think that's kind of what you're saying like right 22 now. 22-year-old kid should have been carrying because he had the he had the instincts, the raw instincts to act and not just observe. Um and he was alert enough to um to jump into action and to do what he needed to do and I, he probably saved lives. So I don't mean – when I say hero, I mean that in every sense of the word. He put his life on the line, but he was able to to act quickly, to think fast enough to say, oh, this guy's for real. Take him out. Move. Do it now. I think most people would be like, oh, is that a joke? Is this part of the service? Is this – if someone trying to make a commentary here, you know? I don't think I would think any of those things. I think a lot of people would. No, actually. I don't think I would think any of those no, things. I'm not saying about you. I'm just saying people in general. Yeah, of course, you don't really know what you would actually think or how you would react and, and, until it happens. I'll just say that I would rather be afforded the opportunity to effectively use a tool than to not have the tool at all. So, so the, well, the, absolutely. The, the lesson and here is ABC, always yeah. be carrying. Yeah, because you don't know what's coming around. And um, there have been so many incidents at churches. Uh, well, I don't know for, about so many incidents, but enough uh, to say, enough. hey, maybe maybe churches are an inviting target. Well, I mean, and it's not just here in America. You look all over the world, and churches are a target. And, wow, and yeah. that culture of targeting churches is finding its way here, too. And it, I'm not just talking about, like, radical groups i'm talking about nut jobs who walk in and want to stab people well yeah the the dylan dude that, that that's what he did he hit a church he was a white dude uh white nationalist some or other dude that targeted church so yeah it's 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 not just muslims that we're talking right. about <laughs> so if you're going to carry i mean we're repeating ourselves over and over again but if you're going to carry always carry uh, and try to be in the state of mind where you are alert and you you are aware of your environment. Um, and if you hear, I mean, maybe the thing that triggered this guy, meaning the usher, to be alert, is he heard bangs outside that sounded like gunfire. And he's like, hey, what's going on? Hey, and, what's like it? 
And when and when it kicked off inside the church, he he jumped into action and he was able in the right place at the right time. Thank God. Literally. Thank God. Literally. Literally. Thank God. So let, let's there. get to our, what do you think? Are we going to get to our next story? Are you ready for our next story? Yeah, let's we've beat this dead horse. It's not a dead horse, but Chicago gun control advocate chooses safety over ideology oh. or oh, no. oh. gun control advocate. Oh. Wise God. Oh. This is a heartwarming story, isn't it? It is. I love this. So, actually, though, but let's the story's make, kind let's of... Let's make kind faces. Oh, wait. Oh. 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 She has found the light. You know... She has joined. <laughs> yeah. You know when a gun control advocate buys a gun, an angel gets their wings. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear the glock go, clap, clap, yeah. clap, 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 an angel gets his yes, wings. Yes, exactly. So this is a, a so a gun control advocate recently turned heads when she told a radio station that she had decided to purchase a firearm. She did so after experiencing some dangerous situations, situations that she believed could have been made much less traumatic if she had a gun to protect herself. And was this a straw purchase? I, I do not believe it was a straw. And, I believe it was a, a legitimate you... above board. Oh she oh she did it legitimate. Legit. I I just said the word legitimate. I don't know why I did that. Uh, and she, but and it, she... It, it was, it was by yes, it was, it was done by the books, so to speak. Oh, so she didn't go to some gun dude on the corner, like yo yo yo, you got you got any nines, man? No, she didn't. She didn't. No, she didn't do that. <laughs> no, she didn't do that. Well, I don't know. Then again, it doesn't really tell how how she. I don't think it uh, 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 tells how she 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 did it. So she was a, she was once a gang member. And she turned. Wait, what? Yes, yeah, she was a gang member. So she was a gang member, and then she turned from a gang member to gun control champion. Now I don't know if that was like th this is from Guns. dot com, by the way. I don't know if that was like a sudden transition. She woke up as a grant. She, you know, one day she was a gang member, and she woke up the next day. I'm a gun control advocate. I must leave the gang. I don't know what transition there was, or. Or how 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 that happened? But, but what maybe is... she saw enough of her friends get shot with illegal guns that were purchased in straw sales that she then transitioned and said all guns are evil in the hands of all people and we need to get rid of these things. Possibly, That's my guess. Possibly, it it could be possible that she really just somehow thought that if you just if you just ban guns that somehow all the violence would go away. And meanwhile, in England, you know they've 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 effectively neutralized uh, gun possession in England. It's it's very 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 well legally. I don't know how many people illegally have guns in England, but but I will say that I did a video right once on. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, because I will post this on the YouTube channel, then uh, I did a video. Uh, it was about uh, what was going on with uh, England stopping the or with london saying that uh uber couldn't operate anymore and apparently the londoners they love their their they love their state control but one of the people i i, I had commented on like wow based on these responses i guess i could see why it is that uh, that it seems like so many people in the UK just kind of rolled over on the gun gun on the, on the gun rights thing, and the guy literally responded, "No, no, we have gun rights. Uh, you, if you want a gun, you can apply for a gun, and if the person decides that you have a good reason for getting a gun, they'll go ahead and let you get a gun. But uh, fortunately, not many people do that." Because most people in London and in the UK are are definitely don't want their dangerous neighbors to have guns. Okay, so and that I'm thinking that might be kind of the mentality that she may have developed is like if you if you just get rid of the guns somehow magically people will will stop stop doing this stuff. Now in the UK, now that they've 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 tamped down the gun thing, now it's the knives. <laughs> <laughs> they even have a knife like drop off your knife in yes. the bucket yes exactly like, along the streets this is retarded but I, i'm curious to i'm curious to know this chick um does she does she Did just, you just want call guns her a for, chick yeah she's a chick wow does she just want guns for herself 
or, you know, because she has been in some dangerous environments or is she an advocate now for everyone in dangerous environments to be able to, Let's find to have out. a gun? Let's find out. So she's a former gang member who then transitioned to gun control champion and she stepped down from many of the organizations she once supported. Whoa, okay. So no, it looks like she's had a real change of heart and now legally carries a can gun. Camila Williams, 29, told WBEZ Chicago for NPR's All Things Considered how her life has pivoted between polls when it comes to gun politics. And again, this is from guns.com. I'm reading this. So William said she bought her first gun when she was only 12 for $25 on the streets and lived a rough life until at the age of 18 and pregnant with her son, she moved to a safer neighborhood in the suburbs. Aha! Once she was in a safe place. Oh. Ah! Along, Interesting. Right, right. Interesting. Move into the suburbs and you got to get your guns. No, no, actually it was the other. It was the other way around. Move into the suburbs and feel safe and feel like, hey, suddenly, hey, why do people have guns? Along oh, with, is that what it was? Yes. Along with oh. getting her GED and starting college, Williams began to advocate for increased gun laws, citing the loss of more than 20 of her friends and relatives in fatal shootings. Holy moly. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, besides, like I suspected. Right. Besides appearing on local stations, she spoke, okay, I don't care where I, she spoke to a number of uh, national places. Following the death of her 21-year-old cousin in a homicide last summer, Williams began to distance herself, distance herself from the groups. And now this is her talking. I don't think people understand because they tell me, Camila, keep fighting. You're doing a good job. Keep speaking. We hear you. But to me in my heart, do you really hear me? I don't think nobody, nobody hear me. Okay, that's what it's, okay. Working on her, okay, no, working on her master's degree. I don't think nobody hear me. Working on her master's degree. Wait, hold on. I don't think nobody hear me. Working on her master's degree, William says it is hard to find empathy with gun violence survivors. These parents that I'm helping, their kids got killed. How do I know that your kid ain't killed my people? How do I know? She also obtained a concealed carry permit and a handgun. Wow, how the heck do you do that in Chicago? That's really hard. When questioned about the curious balance between her past advocacy and her newfound move to get to carry, Williams said, this is a telling quote to me. The people that will probably say that, that the people who probably say that live in safe communities never experience the losses that I've experienced. To me, it's like, I'm not going to die. Yeah, it's like, I'm not going to die. Okay, so it seems like she's had an awakening. Um, uh, uh, by by necessity. The, yeah, she she look. She was she carried a gun because she had to because she lived rough on the streets. She lived the life. But then she moved into the suburbs where she felt safer, but she still doesn't feel safe enough. So she look. People in the suburbs, they got guns. You know why? Because they got stuff, and they don't want other people taking their stuff. Right. So as you move out, if as you move out of the culture of dependence on the state, um, and you move into some form of affluence, uh, you're not so easy to say, "Hey, um, come get my shit." It doesn't matter because someone else bought it anyway. Um, People in the people who start to transition, regardless of race, regardless of culture, regardless of any of that stuff, you start to transition into the middle class. You start buying guns, and that's that's American culture. Now, there's the flip side of that, where people who are, have been in the suburbs for generations and feel comfortable there and feel like the police are doing an adequate job, and my my uh, city services are fine and dandy they respond quickly to our needs and desires um those folks um they go in a different path and unfortunately they find out the hard way sometimes that uh there's no such thing as being safe and it's better to be prepared than to wish you had been yeah and yeah i when you know when it comes down to it what she has confronted is the reality of power. See, words don't stop bullets. 
bullets. Kind, bullet. Yeah. The threat of bullets coming back are much more effective at stopping bullets. Well, you know what's because even they're not fired in the first place. Yeah, dude. You know what's even better at stopping bullets, and it, I'm not talking about AR five hundred armor. I'm talking about is someone shooting at you, like what happened in Houston, and I don't know the details. Uh, gangbangers are rolling past your house, slow rolling your house and shooting at you, and you come out with an AR, and you go clack, 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 and drop a couple of 30-round <laughs> magazines into their car. That also stops the bullets from coming at you. Yeah. Called, and that works. That works really well. Yeah. So uh, somebody watching here, uh, Andrew Marich, a.k.a. Bodie. Um, I do a show with him. Hi, Bodie. Also, hello, Mr. Boatster. Uh, he's actually been on Full Auto before. Uh, he says, I like carrying because it really gives me a great calm. And, you know, it does me, too. Uh, I mean, it doesn't make me feel invincible. And I, 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 I know it doesn't make Bodhi feel vis invincible, but it does. It gives me a sense of calm. It's like, okay, you know, I'm, I've, got, I've got a chance. I've got a fighting chance. I'm not just totally vulnerable out there. I'm not a total well, sitting duck right, against today, most realistic threats. Against right. some threats. That are not realistic, certainly against some threats. I'm a total sitting duck. I mean, if somebody decides to fly a, a, a drone over my house and, and, and you know, drop a, a missile on me, I ain't protecting myself. Okay, so if God's will is to call you home today. You coming home, son. No matter how hard you fight, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going home. Oh, yeah. If, on the other hand, you're Odysseus and you're in the ocean and you're drowning and you're like, God, help me. And he goes, dude, kick your feet, paddle your hands, and maybe we can get something accomplished here. Right. So, you know, carrying is like kicking your feet and paddling your hands and trying to be self-sustaining and not depending on other people and other things to carry you through. And and I think that's what this uh, this young lady, I think that's where she came from. She probably... I mean, I don't know. I'm just totally speculating here. But hey, why not? You know, she probably, you know, she came out to the suburbs and a bunch and of. And good uh, for her. And I. Oh, yeah. And great. I, great. I'm, and I'm I happy congratulate about that. That's her. great. But, Dude, being a 12 year old kid on the street with a gun, what are her chances of ending up with a master's degree? Yeah. And she's, Seriously. She's, she's working this on is it. A person, this is a person of merit. This is a person of ability. Uh, and God bless her. And I hope she does well in her life. Um, and I'd like to welcome her to the to the to suburbia. To, no, I'd like to welcome her to free America. Oh, right. Well, I would just like her to to to, to welcome her to the Carry Club. Welcome. Yes. Welcome to the Carry Club. Although she was carrying before she was, you know, she. Yes. Yeah. But at any that rate, was a different kind of carrying. Yeah, yes. that was a different kind of carry. But anyway, you know, she came and she heard all the, you know, the feels, the message of feels. From all her her friends that I'm sure she discovered when she went out into suburbia, uh, I don't want to play the white card, but I'm I'm betting there was a lot of white folk involved in this, <laughs> a lot of white suburban liberal folk involved in. Hey, dude, you know guns are bad; they kill. Yeah, yeah, I killed twenty of my family and friends. Ain't 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 even gonna lie. Well, you know we gotta we gotta put an end to the gun violence. No, no, you don't want to put an end to the gun violence. You just don't trust your freaking neighbors. Because if you really want to put an end to the gun violence, then you call for everyone to not have guns, including the government. But you don't do that. <laughs> you don't do that. It's just a particular type of person. Whoever is not part of the government should not have guns. So, so at some point, I think uh, reality hit home. And uh, maybe, maybe... Maybe while she's sitting out there in suburbia, she remembers. You know, I do remember there are things that I liked about carrying, because because it did kind of it did have, you know, it did kind of help in some situations. You know, and you know what's interesting when you outlaw guns, it's weird that the people that don't get guns are the people that are trying to be good citizens. Those aren't the people that were bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> the good citizens weren't the ones that were bothering me. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. there you go. I, 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 that's a fascinating story. I'm, it is, and, and it's 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 a victory for the people who advocate for 
for the fundamental right to self-defense. It's a, it's a good story. It's, it's, it may be the feel-good story of the year. I don't know. Could be. Could, could possibly be. You think, you think she's an NRA member at this point? I have no idea. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think she's there yet. I think after she gets her master's degree, I think that's, that's when that part will start to click in. That's very, very possible. Yeah. But we're going to go on to the next story. How you, how you feel about that? We should do that. We're going to go on to the next story. And there I, it is. My feelies, my feelies are good. Let's do this. Ohio homeowner to be presumed innocent. That's right. Home defenders could get relief from unjust Ohio laws. You heard me right. That's, that is unfucking believable Wow, that in the you United the States. F-bomb on that one, huh? Yeah. In the United States of America, you have to prove your innocence. Seriously? Ohio, doesn't this embarrass you just a little bit? Well, what, some kind of third world backwater? And this is the, oh, Wait, that's Ohio, sorry. Well, it's Ohio, you know, they do have the Ohio State Buckeyes there. Uh, so Ohio, they kind of, you know, I'm a Penn State fan, so it tells you all you need to know about how I feel about that. So, uh, an Ohio Senate bill would end the practice and I think this is noble, of forcing homeowners to have to prove they acted in self-defense. Instead, it would put the burden of, uh, on the state to prove they did not act in self-defense. Well, that's a novel idea. As it stands right now, the burden is on the homeowner in Ohio to prove that they acted in self-defense if they use a gun to defend their home from intruders. And just a quick question. In Ohio, um, do you have to lodge red coats if they come to your front door? Is that still like one of their laws? What, what is this again? In, in Ohio, do you still have to lodge red coats if they come to your door and come a knock? And I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because you know that's kind of where we're at in Ohio with their laws. It seems pretty backwards so, and stupid. So, hey, Ohio, wake the fuck up! It's, so, it's time to change this. So, oh, that's twice now. So in so. the in the six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon, we've just entered into one degree of separation with this story because the name of the senator is Kevin Bacon. Not no same way. Yes, his name is Kevin Bacon. Not it's not the same Kevin Bacon, but let's pretend it is. What the heck? And and he's a Democrat, right? No, he's a Republican. Oh wait. You mean the ACLU isn't all over this for like No. No. No interest whatsoever in this. None. No? I, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. I, I have no idea. But in this story, there's nothing about the ACLU in this story. I don't know if the ACLU has ever ever tried to undo this. I'm, I'm betting no. I would be willing to bet no. So Senator Kevin Bacon, he has announced a first hearing for Senate Bill 180. It's called. And the name of the Senate bill is Concealed Carry Modernization. Uh, how, how about... Uh, uh, basic right to the presumption of innocence. <laughs> Just how go about, with that. <laughs> how about the? How about when it was? When did the presumption of innocence enter into the law, the codes of law in the United States? Like late seventeen hundreds, early eighteen hundreds. Last year. Is it? Well, in Ohio, it hasn't entered yet. Well, yeah, that's true. In Ohio, it hasn't. So they're not really entered. modernizing. They're not you know, modernizing. No. They're they're more like stepping back to the late 1700s right. to come into modern times. Hey, yeah, that thing we did in the 1700s and the whole Constitution. I think Constitution it's time for Ohio thing. to join on to what America is doing. We need to join the other 12 colonies or 13 colonies. Let's hey, we can't, be, we can't be these, uh, oh, what were they called? Oh, my gosh. Ohio was known as, oh. It's time to end the Northwest Territories and join the rest of the colonies yeah, there, yeah. in their laws. Yes, it's time. It's time to join the 13 colonies. It's time. 13. I thought it was 13. 12. I thought it was 12. I need newfangled numbers. I don't know what's up. So the, the bill was introduced last month by Senator Senators Joe Euchre and Jay Hottinger. Both of them are Republicans, and they're seeking to reform the state's arcane self-defense burden of proof requirements. That's right. The I wonder burden. when that was enacted. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, so uh, uh, the, the ar I'm reading from the article here. It says, and by the way, if you go to iState.tv, you can find all the show notes and all the articles on here. Uh, it's uh, It should be on, on the front of the site right now. Gun Reality Hits Home is the name of the 
of the, the post. So it, it goes on to say, remember when you were taught that all people are innocent until proven guilty? Well, we already talked about this, so we'll, we'll skip over that. So I, uh, here, here's, here's great, great news for you Ohio fans. And this is why Ohio State football sucks, okay? I'm going to say it right now. Ohio State football sucks. Go Penn State. So Ohio is the only state in the U.S. with this absurd requirement for burden of proof. That's right. Not even California. Or New do. York. Or New York. Or, or New freaking Jersey. New Jersey. Okay? Only Ohio has this law. So, uh, Jim Irvine, chairman of the Buckeye Firearms Association, it has been talked about in legal seminars around the country for years. Talked about? You mean laughed at? Well, yeah, laughed at. Although, if you live in Ohio, it's... <laughs> You're probably it ain't that it's not funny. so funny. It's not it's not so funny. I, I'd be very nervous if I lived in Ohio. I tell you one thing. You know, we've actually given this advice before. Boy, it, man. What do you do? How, what do you do for this? Because the advice is, you know, if, if if somebody breaks into your home and you have to shoot them, uh, you know, you shoot to. If you're going to shoot, you shoot to kill. Don't don't mess around. Uh, so if you're not willing to shoot to kill, don't shoot. But if you do, and you and somebody dies in your home. The advice is, give them the advice. Go ahead, what? give them the advice. What do you do? You shot somebody in your home and they're dead. What's what? What do you do? Call your cousin Vito and get rid of the body. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah Vito. Vito has a pig farm. A pig farm. <laughs> just get him in the freezer quick before he starts stinking up the place. I'm talking about pig farm. You just you just rush him right on over to a pig. No, don't ask me. No, I've said too much. But anyway, what's 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 the advice? We've given it before. Cooperate? No, no, you don't cooperate. I mean, you don't not cooperate, but no, you, you, you call the police. You report a shooting. You hang up. You don't do anything else. Oh, you yeah. Wait, wait for the police anything. arrive. You say nothing, and you oh. say I will say nothing until I talk to my. Lawyer. Oh, you want to get serious about this? No. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, well, in that serious. case, I'm actually serious. You call nine one one. You say there was a shooting. Uh, when the police show up, you tell them. Officer, I will cooperate completely with your investigation, but first I want to speak to my attorney. And then you shut the fuck up and you don't answer any questions because the world that these cops are swimming in, you don't understand. It's, it's, it's not just the cops. It's the lawyers. It's, it's, it's legal speak. You don't know legal speak. So Correct. don't try it. Wait till your lawyer arrives. Tell your whole story to your lawyer. Your, your lawyer will legal speak it. Your your lawyer is a piranha that swims in that pool and will be able to guide you through it without you uh, losing appendages or time of your life. So you don't yeah. want to lose time of your life. No. But 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 what do you do now in Ohio if the burden of proof is on you? You fall. I would say follow the same exact uh, instructions. Keep your fucking mouth shut until you talk to your lawyer. Because here, there, there was a really good case uh, not too long ago that I came across in the news where a guy, and this is something that's happened to me, uh, there was a shooting, the guy uh, told the police what happened, then a day later he remembered something different and told, uh, called the police and said, hey, I remembered something that happened that was different, and then he called again to give them more information and said, look, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. This is what happened because I, my my thought process is cleared, and I can I can recall better. And this is absolutely absolutely true. After a trauma, you, you forget all the details, and over time, things come to you as to how things developed. Well, he was then prosecuted for murder because he changed the story so many times uh, that things just didn't add up. If he had just kept his mouth shut. And had his lawyer walk him through it and feed the information through his lawyer over time. They could have created an accurate picture of what happened that night and present that to police as a definitive, this is what happened, I, as best as I can remember. Versus telling him, like, in, oh, this is what happened, and he came through, and he did this, and he did that, and then I had to shoot, and this is it. And I was like, oh, wait. 
wait, that didn't happen. I, I remember it a little differently now. And it, and your memory is not a perfect implement. It changes. And, and you remember and any inconsistency, which Correct. you're probably going to have, any inconsistency will will hang you. I think we're done with this story, though. So the so bottom bye bye. line is this is the same. It's the same. We're going to do this. Uh, we're not we're, we're not going to get to the muzzle loader. We're kind of running out of time here. Uh, so we're going to get to our last story of the evening. Actually, what do you? I'll let you pick. I kind of okay. We have two stories that we could possibly do right now. We have New Mexico mo- woman quits job after employer suspends her for defending herself from robbery, or we could talk about the MSM hysterical over legal fifty cal muzzleloader with the silencer. Which one do you want to talk about? Last story. That, let's talk about both. First of all, the fifty cal mu- muzzleloader is genius. And I, that's all I need to say. So let's move on to the next one, and we we've covered all the subjects. Wait, you don't you you don't want to talk about the New Mexico woman quits job after? Yeah, no. Let's talk about that one next. We covered okay, the well, muzzle loader. Okay, the muzzle loader is it's genius, but the but, but the muzzle loader angle actually is <sighs> how the MSM is all hysterical because oh no, there's no law. There is a new firearm on the market. This is from CNN. There's a new firearm on the market with an attached silencer that is not covered by federal gun control laws because it's not considered a gun. And it's not considered a silencer. Everybody run for the hills. (laughs) That's all we'll say about that. All we'll say about that is they, you know, they they showed themselves. The media needs to create hyperbolic hysterics. Yes. Yeah. To sell their dirty rags. To sell the dirty rags and uh, advance. So advances. whatever, whatever dramatic bullshit story they can generate, including the football players going down to one knee. This is all fucking generated by the media. If we're, the media we're didn't not cover this about stupid the shit, players on this show. yeah. But if the media didn't cover this stupid shit, it would be a non-story. But it's a great story now for them because they're selling papers. On to the Oh my gosh, woman, get off your freaking Okay. On to the woman who shot so the bastard, bastard who tried to Okay. So this is the are you, are you, are you, I'm gonna introduce the story now. To, if you're ready, I'm gonna introduce the story. The guy who pulled a gun in the convenience store. That story? <laughs> is that the one we're doing now? New Mexico woman quits job after employer suspends her for defending herself in robbery, or as I like to say, suspended. For defending your life, because that's more dramatic. You, you go, girl. You go, girl. <laughs> you go, girl. But wait, look, they suspended her. They didn't fire her. Why'd she quit? Well, we'll get to it. So, a New Mexico woman is lucky to be alive after the Circles K store. <laughs> that was Possessed? me. I was I was hissing at the Circles K store. Why? Okay. They suspended her. They didn't fire her. She chose to quit. Dude. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, you're going to take the side of Circle K. All right. So she was working in, uh, 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 well, uh, she's lucky to be alive after the Circle K store she was working in was robbed. The woman had a gun, so she was able to defend herself. Her employer suspended her for two weeks for carrying a gun to work. The woman responded by quitting. And this is from guns.com. So a woman who shot an armed robber while working at a Circle K in Albuquerque that's New Mexico, on Monday, has been suspended over the shooting, but she said she's fed up with the company's lack of concern for employee safety and decided to quit. So so what she said here, what she told the Tucson News Now, is robberies have been going on like this for the past few weeks. They have done nothing to protect me, Jennifer Wirtz said. Wirtz said she felt the need to protect herself knowing that she was working a late-night shift that another nearby convenience store had recently been robbed. So Wirtz carried a gun to work on Monday and a few hours into her shift. She, wait, what does that mean, and a few hours into her shift? I don't. She was standing near the door when a man entered the store with a gun. She said the man put the gun in her face, and she reacted. I grabbed my gun from my pack pocket. I cocked it, and I shot. Ooh, right away, I got a problem there. You hear that problem? What's the problem? She cocked it. She cocked it. That's yeah, a, but that's if, a if it was a if it was a revolver, she obviously she it was a robber. It. I'm assuming it. Well, it could have been in 1911. She could have she could have gone double action, but if she's fast and and 
capable with her revolver. She can cock as she's drawing, and she shot him. Hey, however she did it, she did good. Well, yeah, so but. But, but she still, did just fine. But still, she generally speaking, guy. generally speaking, have, have did it she ready drop to the go. Guy? Did she drop the, the guy? shot? Struck the suspect in the chest, and once officers responded to a rob- rob- robbery call, he was transported to the hospital for treatment. The suspect was identified as a 23-year-old, as 23-year-old Theron Mendez, and is expected to survive. So, uh, uh, Wirtz, uh, uh, Wirtz is, uh, the, the this is from. Gun, guns.com wrote this sentence. Wirtz's take charge attitude landed her a two week suspension. And then she said, We are not to chase. We are, or no, Circle K said, We are not to chase. We are not to, pro- oh no, no, Wirtz said this, sorry. Uh, noting Circle K's policy. There you go. I'm getting it. We are not to chase. We are not to provoke. We are not to do anything. We just stand there and give them what they want and they leave. In general, that's not a bad idea, but. Uh, Correct. I'm That's not. a very good yeah, idea. Yeah, absolutely. But but um, the idea that uh, I know, I'll just say hypothetically, if I had a store, I definitely would not be preventing, unless I had like an armed guard or something, or I, I was protecting the folks, I would not say to them, you cannot carry. I, I wouldn't do it. But I would say to them, listen, I am going to look at how things unfold. So if like, if you did something that, I mean, the guy pulls a gun on you. I think that you have a right to pull a gun on him and shoot him. I'm sorry. If if, if he's pulling it, I mean, if he's just like from a distance, I mean, I don't know the situation, but if he's from a distance, he says, you know, he's got the money out and he says, give me the money. Just give him the freaking money. But w- when, when he gets close and personally pulls a gun on your face, yeah, I think I'm probably, if I'm able to, I'm probably going to shoot him. If I, if I can. If I feel in any way, shape, or form that I might not be able to get the drop on him first, I'm probably just going to comply. And I don't know Look, what the situation was here. If you're going to draw on a draw, it's a very bad idea. Chances it's are you're going to Very, very difficult to do that. Yeah. 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 When you when you're when they got the draw on you, the best thing yeah. you can do is comply and wait wait for your opportunity. Correct. So, if she shot him once and he was pointing a gun at her, he wasn't there for a fight. Like he was just using the gun. Well, they're as, hardly ever there people. for a fight, right? So he wanted a couple hundred bucks, whatever was in the drawer. He, they, this was not going to be a combat shootout. But as soon as she popped a hole in the guy, the guy turned and ran. So, oh, I didn't run. I don't think. I think he dropped, and then he was taken to the. I'd hospital. like to see the details. Well, it said that. Uh, I mean, they, they got no, him I mean, there. he didn't stand there for a fight. He didn't shoot back. No, I, well, I'm well, I'm running. What did she have? Did she have a 357 Magnum? What was she carrying? Well, I'm, I'm hoping know. she had a 357 Magnum. If she Magnum. had something of that caliber, then, yeah, you shoot him in the chest, it's probably going down. Right. And he's done. That's it. Well, the, Lucky it's, to be alive. That's, well, whatever she used in this particular instance was a man stopper because it stopped him. It was a man was stopper. The, the man yeah, stopper. so 40 cal 357 you don't Whatever want to get into is. that argument yeah yeah no we know I'm, I'm not, I'm not but she I'm wasn't not using no nine argument. i can tell you that much no she was not using a nine a nine to the chest unless you get lucky and you hit a vital artery that like squirts or or you hit the heart right away but other than mm-hmm. that if it was a nine uh probably not i don't know how many nines that you would carry that you would need to you're gonna cock. open up a can of worm with this conversation i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it that we'll Ooh, say I that think for... we just did i think we just did no no we didn't let, let me just get it's to closed. the chase let me cut to the chase nine millimeter sucks that's not true nine and millimeter is good it's fine it's it's not it's good en- it's good enough it's good right? enough it, yeah i would say you it's know good what enough it's not good it's good Wait. It's good enough for the feds. So you just go with that. You just go with your whatever's good enough for the feds. <laughs> that is go. inappropriate. Let me let me that let me is, remind you. You calling the me feds, a fed? Are you calling me a fed? The feds decided that uh, in their response to a long gun shootout in Miami was to develop a better handgun. Not a good move. <laughs> Instead of assuring that their guys had long guns for long I'm guns, your guys that, long that guns would have been the better choice. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to switch to a 10 millimeter, which none of our wusses can shoot. Oh, wait, did I say that? 
in public? I yeah, did. you did. None of their fucking wusses can shoot the ten millimeter because it hurts their hand. Right. So they went. So they went from the ten millimeter to the forty cal, and they still can't handle the forty. So what did they do? They went down to the nine millimeter because the nine millimeter has all this new ammunition that's so much better than it was in the eighties and nineties. Well, dumbass, the forty cal and the ten millimeter ammunition of today is so much better than the ammunition of the eighties and nineties. Should I get off my high horse? Yeah, get off your high horse. I do want to add a little comment here, and then I think we're going to wrap the show up. Uh, Larry, Larry Cousins, he's my resident State of State based friend. Larry, how you doing? Uh, he says, uh, and this is in regards to this convenience store story, and I think this is a, a good point. Uh, serious liability insurance and workers' comp insurance issues for convenience stores allowing employee firearms. So... That is that is a mitigating factor. I'm still going to hiss at Circle K just because I'm a self righteous, uh, all guns all the time kind of guy. I'm an all or nothing kind of guy, so I'm just just going to go with that. So, I, I you got any last uh, remarks as we wrap this show up, Mister? Yes. Mr. My my closing remarks are that just because the feds went to the nine millimeter because it's good oh my enough, gosh, seriously, you're not going to just let this go for another show. Oh, we can Hell have no. another show on this. We should because nine millimeter sucks. Listen, ass. there's, there's, uh, n- n- don't listen to him. Look, nine, I don't want to get nine shot millimeter. by the nine millimeter for sure. Listen, but I also don't want to get shot by a twenty-two. Nine millimeter hollow point and a range of you know fifteen feet or less will 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 do some serious damage. And if you have, you know, you have eight nine rounds of nine miller going into your center mass, you're probably gonna stop. Correct. Probably. Just saying. Yeah. But if you if you have a nine millimeter and you're getting in a shootout in which you're dealing with distances, good luck. It's not even good distances. Luck. If look. No, th- it's like okay, reason. like the, the 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 shooting that happened with the you know in the in the baseball field with the uh, the, the, the 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 GOP Congress people. The story nine, that nine got buried. millimeter nine mil yeah the story that got buried nine millimeter would have done you a darn bit of good a darn bit of good but if you had something 40 or higher you would have had at least a chance dude not a great chance but at least a chance nine millimeter at that at that situation nine millimeter wouldn't have done you a darn bit of good unless you got incredibly lucky it is well established that the 357 magnum uh when people get shot with that that pretty much puts the end to the fight uh very similar statistics have come out about the 40 cal uh the 40 cal is nipping at the heels hot 40 cals in particular are, are nipping at the heels at uh, of uh 357 magnum in terms of the ability to shoot a guy and stop him and take him out of the fight now the 10 millimeters like the god of semi-autos but um that's a little too much gun for most people so i would say if you're going to go with a revolver 357 Magnum, 38 Special Plus P Plus, or 40 Cal. 357 Sig is also good. Okay. 9 millimeter, 9 millimeter sucks ass. All right. Well, you know what? We're, we, I don't, uh, let's say, let's, we're going to tentatively plan on doing this discussion the next episode next week, unless something bigger comes up that we feel the need to talk about. But other than that, we're going to have this discussion about the nine millimeter because I, I I won't say that I'm like a total nine millimeter enthusiast, but I probably find more usefulness for it than you, and that's what we'll we'll discuss. And I will well the nine millimeter crush will you. Kill you eventually. I'll crush you. I will but, literally crush you with my words. Oh, you 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 can try. I will. <laughs> I absolutely okay. will. Oh, I get more bullets in my gun. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not going to have the conversation now. I'm not. I'm, get, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not going to reveal my secret. Are you afraid? Do, no. Do you have to I, prepare? Do you have to get your statistics? Oh, yeah. Book? I'm going to prepare. Absolutely. I'm going to prepare. So uh, any any last remarks to the to the, to the the crowd here? The, the awesome. One, just one serious comment. Seriously. Nine millimeter sucks ass. <laughs> okay. So I am Paul Gordon, and uh, you're Professor here with Rambo. Uh, for Professor Rambo. This is Full Auto. This is iState.tv's Full Auto. We are on the Liberty Principle page. If you're watching on YouTube, 
we air live on the Liberty Principle page. That's uh, facebook.com forward slash no consent, the number two, no consent to gov. And uh, you'll find us on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash iState TV. However, uh, if you want to find all the links to everything, all you got to do is go to istv.me and you find everything. You find not only full auto stuff, but all the other stuff that, that happens on iState.tv. So we'll see you next week, uh, roughly around the same time, around 9-ish, 9 to 930, whenever Professor Rambo uh, finally shows up for, for, for work. That's when we do the show. So, well, we'll see you next week, Professor Rambo. Any more, any, any last You want remarks? some more final comments? No, I don't. I, I, I would like, sure. <laughs> I would like some, maybe a Greek saying or something to, to, to play us out. We'll, we'll do something very simple. Kalinikta. Kalinikta. Which, which means uh, nine millimeter sucks. <laughs> it means good night. I know, I know. But yes, it sure does. All right. We'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, y'all.